those of you who have seen some of the episodes of CVC know that I am very interested in acting and being an acting coach. Well, the person I have with me tonight is Sofia Senica. Sophia and I have known each other for several years now, and we have a lot in common. I reached out recently to Sophia and said, I don't know if you remember me. And what was your response and welcome when I said, do you remember me? I'm like, of course I remember you. You're Joyce Van Drool. And she goes, that's not my name. I said, well, why you let me call you that all these years? She goes, I correct you every time, but you still keep calling me Van Drool. And I'm like, well, at least you know I remember you. That's how you take it. And you were chuckling as I introduced myself, yes, right? Yes, yes. Because I was like, oh, is that how you say it? So, <laughs> so get it right. Sophia Sanika. Yes. Because I can say that. Yes, you do. You say it very lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. I invited you here today. Uh, part of it is, is personal reasons. I like to share experiences and information on joining the wonderful world of acting and modeling. So part of a two-part series really is talking about how do you get started in acting? And I would like to hear a little bit about getting started in the modeling business too. So what led you initially to acting? So um, having a background in modeling first, because that was my primary passion. Uh, 12 years old, I saw, you know, Naomi Campbell and, you know, um, Cindy Crawford and you, Farrah Fawcett. Oh, my, who did not want the flip? Oh, I, I tried, but look say. it. Yeah, look, I, I, I eventually <laughs> went this route. Um, <laughs> but coming from a modeling background in working my way through for the last 20 years or so, I had an understanding and appreciation for the fact that models need to have an understanding of acting, yes. need to be able to you know, articulate effectively. What if a client wants to hire you for a two or three part uh, project that involves you needing to speak? Sure, so, spokes models. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, so I, I began to appreciate it and you know, just started kind of sitting in the back of you know, the workshops that I was you know, setting up for other talent, taking in the information that I was receiving. But I'd probably say it was really in the last you know, two to three years where I really started thinking about um, developing myself as an actor so that I can, again, continue to give the best information. So I got an acting coach. I've been working with him for the last year. I've had the pleasure in being in a couple of commercials, not speaking yet, but we're working towards it. Yeah, um, somewhere. So yeah, you know, again, I've had an appreciation for the acting world for years. It, but as an individual pursuing my own pursuits, I'd say it'd be like the last three. Excellent. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how many different ways people get into the acting industry. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of folks, myself included, I, I woke up at one point and my life had been turned upside down. Mm -hmm. uh, medical, job, everything was changing. And I finally just said, you know what, I always wanted to do it. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. It was difficult, even for someone like me, who's very assertive, and I'll go out and talk to anybody and everybody and ask you a million questions. I just never got a clear answer to how do I get started. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I like to share with folks is what I was doing, um, would I recommend it to others, and what would you recommend to others? Living here in Connecticut, we have so many film shoots going on mm -hmm. and people just don't know how to get started. Yeah. So um, I would like us both to be talking about different ways that we recommend to others, things that we've done mm -hmm. to get people who start in the acting industry. Okay. Um, what is one of the first things if you told, if someone said to you, Sophia, I really want to be an actor, I don't know how to get started. What would be the first couple of things you would advise? I think the first thing would be is, um, probably identify an acting coach that can at least do um, like an intro session. I mean, can you act? I, you know, that's really the first thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you could have the passion to want to do it and you, for whatever reasons, just don't bring it to the camera. Like, I want to be um, a ballet dancer. Exactly, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so in theory, yeah. I could do all the moves yeah. and I would look great, but it's not Bomb. gonna happen. You know, it's just not right. you know, what I'm built for. Yeah. So I think the first thing is really making sure that this is the business for you. And then again, getting an understanding of maybe what type of actor might be, um, you know, your pursuit. 
uh, there's so many different avenues of actor, but maybe you're someone that just isn't uh, ready for the camera. So voiceover work could be a better avenue for you as a way to get started. So I think that'd probably be my first thing. Um, mm -hmm. Again, now finding an acting coach can still be overstimulating because there's so many great ones out there and then right. there's ones that pretend like they're really great yeah. um, and they haven't done anything outside of their own personal you know, success. So how are you really a great coach? Um, so if, if that route still felt a little, you know, overstimulating, you can think about the idea of, you know, looking at agencies or, you know, managers. Um, a lot of people get started with the casting directors, uh, casting agencies directly. So just kind of, you know, registering with them and applying for any of the extra work that maybe comes up, which is great. It well, gets you on well, set. Well, it's, it's great that you mentioned that about casting companies because Everything you're saying so far are pretty much in line with everything I advise others to do, mm -hmm. including finding casting companies. Yeah. And there are casting companies uh, like Synthetic International or uh, Grant, or GWCI is the mm -hmm. big one here in Connecticut. Um, but Boston Casting was actually the first company I got paid gigs from. Okay. So even though they're based in Boston, they still cast um, films that are shot in Connecticut, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and Mass. So that's the beautiful thing about being in Connecticut. We can go to most any state. There you go. Um, now, background work. One of the things I like to suggest, if someone is really interested in their work and their craft and they really think they want to do this, along the same lines of can you do it is can you be on set for 12 hours? There you go. So yeah. even a commercial, and I've booked a few commercials mm -hmm. myself, where they only say they're shooting for a few hours. Well, you have to plan on getting there early, yep. you need hair and makeup, you gotta get, pre so it's a very long day. Mm -hmm. So have you uh, had an opportunity to do background work on a film set or are you ex more experienced with the commercials? More experienced with the commercials um, and they're pretty good. You know, they'll book you for an eight hour day but maybe you're only there for five. Yeah. But mentally you need to be planned to be there for the eight hours oh, and like yeah. you said, um, you have to get there, you know, you have to you know budget that time yep. in. Um, most of the ones that I've worked on, there had somewhere there was hair and makeup, somewhere we had to come with our own hair and makeup done, which is fine for me. Uh, but you know, it could turn in easily a 10 hour day. So I noticed that neither one of us has mentioned headshots yet. <laughs> Because that's coming, right? Well, absolutely, it's coming. absolutely. You know, it's coming. I, I don't recommend people getting headshots without having um, a mentor. Yes. And whether your mentor comes in the shape of an acting coach, uh, an agent, a manager, um, or, or just a mentor in general, someone from the business that knows a little bit more than you. You need some direction in order to really be able to maximize the investment it takes to get quality headshots. Um, and Maximizing being, investment quality yeah. headshots. And I, and I use those so words too I, That's why wisely. I'm slowing you down on that because it's critically important that you're, you are still learning. Mm -hmm. and, and headshots is a whole other kettle of fish. It is. You need the, a photographer that understands headshots. Mm -hmm so you don't look like a real estate ad. There you go. You also need to make sure that you're not overly made up mm -hmm. because it's not a glamour shot. Right. This is who you are. It's, it's your persona. You need to be able to show this is what I look like so you can envision your roles on right. me. Even your outfit needs to show a sense of personality, but still yes. um, be very uh, simple, traditional, as my nieces and nephews would call it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no designs. You're not looking for you know any busy prints. Even for you know some people, my shirt could be considered you know a little too much for a traditional headshot. It, oh, because so, of all the folds around well, the neck. Well, the folds around yeah. the neck, it's kind of a distraction yep. in that sense. And the idea is that, yes, we want to get a feel of your personality, yet at the same time, you don't want anyone to feel distracted by, right. ooh, that's a really nice shirt, and they're not looking at you. Yeah. Um, and You've that's why seconds, you don't wear... Split seconds. Right, and that's yeah. why you don't wear jewelry, and, and you yep. know, their hands aren't in the pictures. So, again, not understanding what right. you're doing will make you feel like you've wasted your money because you're getting you're not getting the response you're looking for. So headshots are one of like for me one of the last things that I would even recommend someone getting started because you want to understand what you're doing and whether like you said you take on an acting coach or you have a showcase mentor to you know getting an agent 
they're going to be able to say, hey, this is what you should be looking for. Right. Um, and this is, you know, maybe you can even make a recommendation on the photographer you should work with. Because again, you want to maximize your investment. Yes. You are going to have to invest. Please do not walk around here and, and with this uh, reality TV thought process that everything's going to be handed to you. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and of course, in a real world, we'd love to be able to just do test shoots and, you know, get you out there and, you know, not have have you pay for a single thing until you start making money, but it's just not, it's not real. Well, you know, I, everyone I like needs to, to be it. compensated for their but time even, and energy. But even if you are, uh, you know, I changed professions actually more than once. <laughs> uh, but each time I did though, I needed to get formal education. Mm -hmm. I needed to get certifications. I needed to get continuing education. So whether it was uh, a master's degree to become a teacher or it was an insurance certification, I don't know why I chose to sell insurance. I, just, I don't know. But anywho, um, but every time I, I made that switch, I had to do training. Mm -hmm. I had to find a mentor. I, well, I should say I had to find a mentor. I learned a long time ago to find a mentor. Yeah. And that's how we reconnected was I mm -hmm. reached out to you and I said, I'm looking for a mentor. I don't know if you remember me. I do. Yeah. And, and, and my response back to that one was, girl, I'm still trying to get my life right. Uh, but we can do it together, you know, and, and that's just like, where we always have been, yeah. like, let's just do it together. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I love the idea of working with people and helping them get started. But, you know, am I at that place where I feel like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the number one mentor. No, I'm still getting my bearings. I'm still having an understanding of the industry. I still reach out to people who have been doing this longer so that they can continue right. to teach me so I can pass it on. Um, so, you know, like I said, headshots are probably one of the last things that I would recommend. You know, like I said, I would start with the idea of maybe first making sure that, you know, you really, you can want this, but are you good at it? Yep. Um, is there some skill there? You know, can you translate your regular passion itself in front of the camera? Because it really isn't as easy as people like to think. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, you could just read a script and it's good. No, it, it isn't because now yeah. you've got lights. Now you've got people watching you. There's a certain um, emotional uh, affect you're supposed to be giving. It needs to feel real without selling. I mean, there's so oh, many the, the different nuances. rules. Oh, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah. You know, that sometimes they're like fighting each other. Oh, you know what I mean? Be and relaxed and natural, but I still want to hear you. you know, but let's, let's <laughs> also toss in that we're not doing in-person auditions like we used to. Now everything is being done, you know, via Zoom and self-tapes. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the other things that is common, I know we both talk to our, our, our students about when we're coaching is self-taping. Yes. And picking the right material. So when we're advising folks to have coaches, and, you know, we both have a lot of experience with that, and a lot of times a coach can sometimes just be, it's okay, you can do this, mm -hmm. versus helping you to pick the material, picking your outfits for your headshots, mm -hmm. um, helping you pick a photographer. Yeah. So a coach, as you were saying, can do all of that. Yep. But someone just starting out, the first thing they need to, do you really want to do this? Okay, how do you get started? Well, um, one of the places I found a lot of information is on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I understand that a lot of folks in our audience might not really get into a lot of Facebook because it's the old people internet. <laughs> but what I like to say to my talent is, uh, guess who the casting directors and agents are? You know, there they're you the over 30s. Yeah. They're the ones that rely on it because Facebook's also a visual medium. So you have you have um, words you can display, you have images, mm -hmm. you have videos. So a casting director can put a posting out. They can see people's they images. Have groups. Oh, the you private know, groups the are private great. The private groups yeah. are great. There's yeah. a lot of knowledge being shared, yes. um, you know, um, amongst people. So it's really, you know, Facebook really is nice. And for me, like social media is still a new um, entity that I'm learning. But I've I've gotten into the the groups, and you've been able to come up with some really great ideas, tips, um, even just motivational quotes. You ever just wake up and you know the <laughs> first thing on my Facebook page is like this quote, and I'm like. I needed that. Um, so yes, doing the research is good, but again, it can be overstimulating because not all the research is factual. Right. Um, some yeah. things are based on opinion. You know, people didn't have a good experience, and so you know they're yeah. voicing their opinion, but their opinion yeah. doesn't mean that it's factual. I um, mean, I find that to be true when it comes to the words showcase and or conventions. Right. Um, so people hear 
you know, acting showcase or convention and they want to run the other way because they don't get it. And Oh, I shouldn't have to pay to be in the industry. And it's like, you're not paying to be a part of the industry. You're investing in an opportunity to showcase your skills to a room filled with agents that yes. it might take you weeks or months to get the opportunity to speak to. You may never get the owner in no. the same room with you if right. by not going to a showcase or a convention. So that that's another way to kind of get started. Well, um, well the great thing about um, showcases, besides the fact that the New England to Talent Showcase is something that you and I are both uh, members of, we're on the talent committee, we're mm -hmm. coaches for, but it's because we've had great experiences yeah. with other showcases and other types of conventions. The idea is that a convention is to showcase your skills. Yeah. So I don't know about you folks, but I, I'm a dance mom, <laughs> so I went to a lot of dance competitions, mm -hmm. um, showcases, um, uh, we 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 sat through the Nutcracker one time because um, our dancer was one of the little children that come out and dance. Nice. Yeah. Well, we sat through like a what two hour ballet to and see them got on stage. Five minutes. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and can you see how there's no frown or run when you say dance competition or you're on right. a competitive dance team yes. that travels? Yes. People are like, cool, no problem. Yeah, yeah. You hear the word showcase and it's attached to modeling and or acting right. and automatically it's considered a scam. Yeah. It really is, if you want to boil it down, it's an aggressive way to get started. It is an aggressive way but to showcase all parties, you. But all parties are in agreement. So the judges are showing up knowing that we're going to grind through and get to see 20, 30, 40, 50 talent mm -hmm. instead of having to schedule 50 different appointments. There we go. So for the judges, their benefit is what's out there right now? Mm -hmm. How do I, as a talent manager, find the person that I connect with that I can, I can help build their career? Or as an acting agent, who's the talent I need to fill my roster? There you go. Because I got a rainbow group of people showing right. up here for one day, and I'm going to get to see them perform a slate, a monologue, two commercials, perform cold reads, improv, right. and a commercial headshot. Mm -hmm. I mean, so being able to have marketing materials, mm -hmm. being able to showcase in front of judges, those are all things that, as a new actor, yes. you can do from any state. Really, any state you can do that from. And again, being attached to um, the showcase and our showcase specifically, you're going to get all the things that I talked about when I said getting an acting coach and really yes. saying, you know, is this for you and what genres yeah. it might be the best. Um, you're going to get the coaching and development needed so that you understand what a monologue is, what the difference is between, say, a voiceover um, project to a TV commercial um, and what emotional affect should be coming with it to the marketing materials that you need. Again, having direction, what to wear, what should your hair look so like. You know, some just some just came to me was um, someone mentioned uh, describing what our technical terms are. <laughs> I, I guess that is a problem when you're entering a new industry is not understanding the terminology. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the technical terms I might have just used was a slate. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I like to tell people a slate is your business card, but it's the first time they're going to see you and hear you at the same time. Yeah. So it's your introduction. So you don't want to just say, hi, my name is. You want to give it some personality. Absolutely. So by, by helping people understand the terminology in the industry, so when they do get an opportunity to audition and they say, give me a slate, you'll know, oh, my name and where I live. Right. Got it. Yep. Um, I, I think the other part that people don't kind of miss out on is the fact that things that they think are only for live theater, like improv, improvisation skills, right. That really plays across all genres. Yes, it does. And it actually even, even for modeling. I mean, mm -hmm. when you're when you're doing a modeling showcase, right. you have to be able to interact and do improv uh, at the drop of a hat. Really? Because what if the girl in front of you is not done? <laughs> what if the girl behind you is not ready? Right. Um, so now you've got to improv. Ooh. I've got to you know to do a couple of extra turns. I need to stall out a few more minutes. Be a little more interactive with the crowd. Um, I just did a, a training course the other day, and that was one of the things I was trying to explain to them is you still have to entertain. Yes, yes it's about the garments that you're wearing, and we want to see it. But a crowd does not pay a ticket to come in to see a show where there's no 
entertainment and entertain energy, yeah. energy. Like you still have to bring something to the crowd, right? Um, with and, your technical skill of being able to turn, that's also et cetera. The idea behind showcases being such a great deal because that energy you get when you're in the room. You know, uh, I have I've had experience now where I coached people I never met on Zoom for several months, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I get them in the room. It's like, where did all that personality come from? Yeah. And it's that energy mm -hmm. between my excitement, their excitement, and we're working off of each other. You know, just don't get that in a self tape. Yeah. And, and a self tape is probably another technical term where you actually record your own audition mm -hmm. by yourself right. and submit it to the casting. Yes. So that's a skill in itself there. It is a skill in itself, but now I, I talked to a casting director and one of the things that she had recommended when it came to self tapes was don't record yourself. Have a no someone someone else record you now oh, again. I was like, we what don't are you going with that? <laughs> right, we don't always uh, have the opportunity to have someone else in the house when the yeah, deadlines yeah, come. Yeah, yeah. But any chance you can get, that was the recommending that was the recommendation coming directly from the casting director. She said because they're going to be able to move the camera around, you're gonna not feel like you're talking to the wall. There's yeah. gonna be that kind of uh, you know in the room interaction, even if they're not speaking. Yeah. you're gonna feel their vibe. Is this good? Is this not? Not good, should I try it again? And that's what you don't get when you're doing it by yourself. Yes. I just did a submission the other day and I was so mad because I was in, the, I mean, usually there's always someone in my house. There's three floors. Oh yeah, pets, kids. Not a single person but the dog and the cats but was in the house listen? with me. Did they listen to you? They did, but you know, it was even harder because it was a non-speaking audition. Oh, so this was hard. all about emotion, yeah. affect, and you had to pretend. And again, now I'm in there all by myself. I make 17 takes. Now I've got to find the best two. So I think really, like I said, any chance you can take advantage of having someone else yep. with you, take advantage. It'll feel less like, uh, you know, you're being a robot in that sense. You'll feel someone's energy and that usually can be helpful. Um, I also recommend putting a picture up. Well, yeah, that can help when, too. When you're, <laughs> uh, I did eyes. I did a picture of some eyes okay. on the wall because when I was recording and I, you're not supposed to look at the camera when right. you do a monologue, um, I needed something to focus back on. And mm -hmm. it's not that I was staring at it, right. but if I looked away, I needed to look back up like I was looking at the same person mm -hmm. again. So having that eye line yeah. set up, that's in, you know the eye line of who am I looking at? Yeah. You know we've seen special effects yeah. where they hold a tennis ball on a stick and say the dinosaurs up here. Yeah. You know it's ah. <laughs> it's the same idea with the the picture of the eyes. Right. Um, even when you have a reader, my husband Michael has been a great supporter. He he doesn't just support me, but he takes part <laughs> in a lot of things, mm -hmm. including being one of our camera operators tonight. Thanks. Hey, honey. Hi. Hi. Um, but he also helps me by reading the other lines and. It's gotten more interesting as he's developed a panache for giving it a little pizzazz. Mm -hmm. It does help though. It does. And it, it, it gives you something to play off yeah. of. So I, I, Which is why I, I would love agree live auditions. Which yeah, I is do so appreciate. Hard. I, I appreciate the um, self tapes because yeah. you can get more auditions done in a yes. week, right? Yes. So the more you audition, the better chance you have to work. I appreciate the live auditions for the fact of that interacting. Um, even if you've got that, you know, casting director whose head stayed down the whole time, trust me, there's some interaction there, even if they're They're acting, listening. They're listening. There's They've already seen what on. you look like, so there they're listening. Go. So, you know, I oh, appreciate yeah. both. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I'm just hopeful that, you know, things will just continue to just stay steady because that yeah. year of nothing Oh my hurt. goodness, that it was hurt. brutal. <laughs> well, I think that year, um, the year 2020, what that ended up doing was it drove the industry further into doing more self-tapes. Yeah. And what the industry found were the casting directors and agents were finally <clears throat> able to figure out how to work this newfangled yeah. um, gadget and talent was getting used to using it. So. Mm -hmm. Though initial auditions are not as prevalent and will never be back to the numbers pre-COVID that right. they were, I strongly believe that they are getting better and more people are getting to do live auditions, but they're usually second round auditions. There you go. And what, one of the things I want to make sure that we talk about is we talked about the sites to log on to for casting directors. Mm -hmm. So when you log on to a place like Backstage.com, which yep. we both highly recommend, yep. is Backstage.com. It's a very reputable organization, been around since 19, the, the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, 
What's really cool about that is when they post a job, a gig for an actor or a model, and they say uh, local hire only, that just means they don't want to pay for you yeah. to fly to see them. So if you live in Connecticut, you can go. There you, you, go. you can submit for that job as long as you can self-report, mm -hmm. meaning get yourself there by you know car, yeah. plane. I've taken uh, the train. Amtrak Acela was sweet, a little expensive, <laughs> but uh, but I wanted to, I did want to try them all. Mm -hmm. I did take the bus. I have taken other. So it, there are many many ways. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Connecticut as an actor, I strongly recommend that before you get a headshot, you can take selfies. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that you're fully visible. Yep. You can take um, some three quarter full body shots. So three quarter shot is anything that you can see the top of your head all the way down to about your knees. And take those pictures, I have a friend take them, and you can use those to get started yeah. to see if it's something you want to do. Yeah. And if an agent, you know, an agent or a manager, uh, you know, even a coach um, can see from the selfies yeah. if there's something there, yeah. you know what I mean? And you may get rejected that first time, maybe even the second, but that doesn't mean that you're not built for the industry. It means that you need to revamp your approach. Right. And again, right. that's where it comes in having a coach, having a mentor, um, considering, you know, going through a showcase because you'll get kind of all of that wrapped into one and the opportunity to actually, you know, talk to people from bigger markets who right. can sign you and do more great things with you. So, you know, definitely, be careful about doing too much that involves money until you actually know what it is you're doing and yes. you understand you know, what the prices are, what kind of value you should be looking for. Because like I said, it can get very expensive. Oh, um, it can, it can. A, a yep. friend of mine asked me, he said, you know, what's one of the biggest things? No, so, um, well, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, we were just saying, um, one of the things I want to just make sure we come back to yeah. also is um, as a, as a coach for both models and actors, I guess the summary would be really think about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Start reaching out to people in the industry. Yes. Um, a, a good coach would let you do a 15, 20, 30 minute free, do we, do we vibe, mm -hmm. are, we, are we working well together? So explore that and also take your own pictures and get yeah. on these casting companies. Yes. Right? Well. Um, I'm really glad you were here today, Sophia. It was so nice to meet you. And I can't wait to talk to you more about yes. the modeling showcase in the springtime. Absolutely. So I hope you'll come back. I will definitely come back. Can't Great. wait. Well, thank you all for joining us for another episode of CVC Interviews. And please come back and we'll talk more about acting in Connecticut with another friend of mine.